The only question was, where to have it? As it turned out, this would be a lot more troublesome than it first appeared. It's somewhat difficult to get a proper idea of this, as a lot of the information seems to have been lost to time in the whims of the speed solving forum, but from what little detail we have, this appears to be the gist. Initially, it was looking quite likely that Worlds 2009 would be held in Hong Kong. However, for whatever reason, the plans fell through. There were rumours that the US Open 2009 couldn't get sponsors and that it might be merged with Worlds. However, this was quickly quashed by Tyson. It eventually got to the stage where Ron said that Worlds would somehow happen even if he had to organise it in his own backyard. Some people were beginning to wonder if Worlds would even happen that year, or if it would be cancelled and pushed to the next year. Eventually, however, on April 22nd, 2009, Ron very tentatively announced the location, Dusseldorf. It wouldn't be until June 10th, however, that the competition was formally announced, running from October the 9th to October the 11th at the Bergwachter Castello in Dusseldorf, Germany. This is the picture I'm getting, anyway. I spoke to Ron, and according to him, there were never any plans for Hong Kong to be the location for Worlds. This could have all just been rumours, but it's hard to see what happened. 2009 was a weird year. All I really know at this point is that Australia was never in consideration. Why would it be? Australia would just be an awful place to hold Worlds. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, people registered, and fast. By the end of the month, Registration had to close, as the competitor limit of 350 had already been reached, with all new registrants placed on a waiting list. One of the potential reasons for this is that, intriguingly, unlike a lot of competitions today, registration was completely free, and there was no cost for entering the venue for competitors. Due to the large number, at the time, the qualification rounds for various events had qualification times themselves. For example, in 4x4, the first round had a direct qualification time of a 1 minute 15 second average. However, if someone couldn't make that time, they could still be entered in the qualification round, as long as their average was at least 1 minute 45 seconds. If, by September 9th, their official result was no better than 1 minute 45 seconds, they will be removed from the 4x4 competitor list entirely. Hi, sorry, just popping in here for a little bit. Hello, excuse the face. When I was editing this video, which is what I'm doing now, obviously, I realised that I might have misread this bit, because if we look at the actual Worlds 2009 website, it says, Competitors who beat the qualification times, see a table below, in an official WCA competition before September 9th, 2009 will automatically qualify for the first round of the events. Other competitors need to compete in the qualification round of the event, or maybe put on a waiting list for the event. So, I think what the issue was here was that I misread this by thinking, okay, so September by September 9th, 2009, if you didn't make 1 minute 45 seconds in your official average, then you would just be completely removed. However, it looks like that if you didn't get to 1 minute 45 seconds, you would have been placed on a waiting list instead. And then if someone else dropped out, you would then be given uh, a chance to actually compete. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I didn't, I haven't really ever competed in an era with qualification rounds or anything, so I don't really know this much. And I'm editing this video and it's coming out tonight as I speak, so um, I can't really get more insight into this. If anyone else knows sort of what's going on here, please leave a comment downstairs. And I would love to hear from you. Um, I'll pin the comment and everything and give you a nice little heart if you actually know what the hell you're talking about. Because, um, yeah, it is a bit confusing. Uh, yeah. Anyway, back to the video. Yes, I bought a bell specifically for this video. It's fantastic. Worlds 2009 would be the first World Championship to feature the 6x6 and 7x7 events. The direct qualification for 6x6 was 4 minutes 30 and 7 minutes for 7x7. This may seem very slow now, but keep in mind that at the time, the fastest people in the world were averaging around 2 minutes 30 for 6x6 and 4 minutes for 7x7, so this was actually a fairly reasonable cutoff. In addition to these official events, there were also several unofficial events, Rubik's 360, Rubik's Touch Cube, and Mosaic Building. The winning Mosaic? was this rather attractive Dusseldorf globe design by Dutch team Frank and Anja Provost. Other designs included a Penrose triangle, 
the WCA logo, SpongeBob, or as the official competition website claimed, Yellow Smiley Face, good job there lads, and Obama. Much like every world championship before and since, there were quite a few world records set. One of the more impressive ones, at the time of course, was a 10.96 square one single world record by Pyotr Mikhail Padlevsky. This was a full step solution that was over a second faster than the previous record by Jianwei Zhu. In addition, there was a 57.94 Megaminx single world record by Balint Bodor, nearly one and a half seconds faster than the previous record. There was also a 16.9 OH average world record by Yumu Tabuchi, a 36.46 4x4 single by Dan Cohen, and a 3 minute 43.15 seconds 7x7 single by Mikhail Halchuk. Irritatingly, those last two records don't appear to have videos anywhere, but judging by the previous records, they were rather impressive for the time. In the end, as with every world championship, it all came down to the final 16 of the 3x3 event. In the running for the coveted first place, a Rubik's Touch Cube and 5,000 euros were Philip Espinoza, Sinpei Araki, Yohei Oka, Rama Temink, Takumi Yoshida, Milan Batiz, Brendan Valance, Eric Akersdijk, Harris Chan, Mitchell Stern, Shuhei Omura, Piti Pichapan, Tomas Zonolski, Mats Volk, Kineti Sehan, and Ro Hessler. With averages ranging from 11.32 down to 12.93, it was anybody's game. Who would become the Rubik's Cube World Champion of 2009? <laughs> Brendan Valance. A Scottish Cuba who placed 10th in the second round, he managed to race up the leaderboard and achieve a 10.74 average, which amazingly placed him third in the world. Second place with an 11.52 average was Eric Akersdijk, who at the time held the single world record at 7.08 seconds. And third place with an 11.64 average went to Tomasz Zonowski, who was the average world record holder at the time with a time of 10.07 seconds. The fastest single of the competition was an 8.84 by Piti Pichadpan of Thailand, which incidentally happened in the finals. For this, Piti received 1,000 euros. Overall, Worlds 2009 was a competition filled with impressive solves and remarkable times. And this would also be the last World Championships before a certain Australian Cuba would come along to shake up how everything worked in cubing forever. Pitching again, the missing competitor, Z.